afternoon, Penn Trafford. Welcome to What's Up Warriors. I'm Cam. I'm Maddie. We've got four great stories lined up for you today, so let's begin. There are many new sports appearing in Penn Trafford. Not only is rugby new to the U.S., but it's also an emerging school sport. Here's John Lang with more on Warrior Rugby. Rugby is on the rise in Penn Trafford. What began as one student's idea in late 2013, the Penn Township Rugby Club has quickly evolved into a formidable program. PT sophomore Trent Soames founded the team as a freshman and began the process of recruiting players. I went to a couple of the team's practices to get the inside scoop on PT rugby. In order to get to know the team better, I sat down with some of the players to ask them a few questions. Last year I was approached by my buddy John Lang. He told me he was going to the rugby meeting. I agreed to join him and I've been playing ever since. Um, Trent Soames approached me last year in the springtime and uh, asked me to come out. A couple of my friends approached me saying that there was going to be a rugby team and at first I was pretty against it because uh, I was doing track at that point. But I came to the meeting and it sounded interesting I came out and rugby really took my heart at that point. We're in PT Rugby's second season now. Uh, goals are to win as many games as possible. The teams are working hard. I really believe in the guys and I think we're going to have a great outcome. My goals for the season is to play my position as best as I can and help the team win. Goals for this season is to, to win a game and just do the best that I can at my position, score, score a try. Rugby has uh, changed my life pretty dramatically before I really didn't have a sport to fit into. I met a lot of great people, been to some cool places, and it's been just a great time, really challenging. My experience has been a lot of fun, um, introduced me to a new sport and a new team, and I met a lot of players along the way. My experience has been good and bad, um, good being that I found a lot of camaraderie and a lot of fun playing the game and I wouldn't say bad, I'd say more hard because there's been a lot of tough challenges we faced and a lot of hard practices. Now that you've met the team, let's learn what rugby is all about. Rugby is played on a field called a pitch and the aim is to beat the opposition by scoring more points. A team is awarded a try when one of their players touches the ball down in the opposition's in goal area. You can also get points by kicking at the goals. Score as many tries as possible. Any player may score a try. A scrum is used to determine which team is awarded the ball after a penalty. A game of rugby lasts 80 minutes with one half time in between 40 minute halves. PT Rugby's first match will be played on Saturday, March 21st. That's all for me. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, John. Read Across America is a program that was established to spark the interest of elementary school students, leading them down the path of learning. It is also showing how reading is an important part of life. For information on Read Across America, we go to Alex Sicatelli. It's that time of the year again. Read Across America Day is here. Video students have been working hard for the past nine weeks to make videos for the elementary schools. To learn more, Mr. V sent us and my crew down to Sunrise Elementary School. Hi, my name is Karen Coiner and I'm the principal at Sunrise Elementary School. Hi, I'm Mr. Spooty. I teach third grade at Sunrise and uh, I was asked to do a short interview about Read Across America Day. As a principal, uh, it excites me to see the elementary kids in the classroom get really excited to see the movies. They love having the high school kids ask them questions about the books that they've created, and uh, they walk away. Definitely, it's something that they go home and tell their parents about, which is the best thing. When kids go home and share their experiences at school with their parents, then we know that it's a success. Read Across America does several great things to connect not only the high school with the elementaries, but also benefit the elementary kids and the high school kids. One would be it offers the opportunity for the elementary kids to see the high school kids and the projects that they're working on. It also does um, a great service to the kids to help promote reading, which would be the main focus that we're going for during Read Across America. We want the kids to get interested in books and by showing the videos that the high school kids create, they're able to get more interested in possibly reading that book or something similar. So Dr. Seuss's birthday was March 2nd, and Read Across America Day coordinates his birthday with a time for elementary students and even students like yourselves to pay attention to the fact of how important reading is even as you grow older. So the students from Mr. Vinton's video class uh, have been visiting uh, Sunrise for at least two or three years now and each year they come to us with a project that coordinates with Read Across America Day. Um, they develop, the students in this class develop uh, a video based on a poem or a book and it gets the kids interested in viewing reading from a different perspective. 
Um, this, the kids get a big kick out of watching the videos, and I know the teachers are happy to see some of their former students. Uh, we really appreciate the time that you guys spend uh, working on the videos, making them, coming up with the ideas. Uh, we know that it takes a lot of time and effort, and we think it's really great. Thanks to the video students, Read Across America Day was success. Back to you guys in the studio. The cast and crew of this year's spring musical, The Music Man, are amping up for opening night next Friday after months of hard work and practice. Let's go to Maddie Grassman for some inside details. Musical season is upon us again, and opening night of The Music Man is just a week away. I spoke with Riley Jamison, Matt Fawcett, Mike Zula, and Ms. Hamill about the progress of the show so far. I think the uniqueness of The Music Man comes from the, uh, the number of people involved and the way that the characters all have very, very specific personalities and very specific parts in the story. It's not a show that just highlights five or six people, it's a show that highlights everybody that's on stage. The costumes are crazy, the hats are really high and the dresses are huge and nowhere else can you see a bunch of your high school classmates, a bunch of guys just dancing around the stage and doing leprechaun kicks like crazy. It's a giant cast and that's what makes it unique because we have a hundred people doing this, like a hundred people doing that and it's just wonderful. We haven't done a classic musical uh, like The Music Man in all four years that I've been in high school and it's something that everybody knows and everyone will love. I think every year a musical experience is different. I think that every year there are different challenges that come about. Uh, this year the challenges that we've had to deal with I think the most are renovation related and uh, we've just had to really think ahead as far as space and time and the availability of people. I think that's probably the biggest difference to me. Um, it's really different. Everything is different. Like we have a different director, we have a different choreographer, we have a different vocal director, we have so many different things and I'm just really excited to work with this cast and this crew because like some of the people are the same but we've all just really grown together and I'm really excited. I think I'm most excited for the reaction of the people in the audience. I think that this musical speaks to uh, the senior generation of our audience. I think it speaks to the children of the audience. It's not just for an adult. It's not just for a little kid. It's for any age. Everybody's different character is so unique and it's just crazy to see all of our different personalities come through on the stage. Well, for me, it's interesting because last year I played two roles where one I was on my knees the entire time and then the other I was in a wheelchair. So this one, I actually get to use my legs and walk around the stage, which is interesting because um, it's just a whole different mindset, body set, everything. Well, the show is difficult because, I mean, it's difficult to do lifts and kicks in dresses that are like crazy huge. I just think that we're doing very, very well. I, I'm excited about what I see happening on stage. I'm excited about the leadership that I see coming forth with the students. I think that it's just really coming along. I think that as we are choreographing the bigger numbers and as we're working through things and as we're cooperating and just working together, that it's really starting to just fall into place really nicely. Come see the show. Yes, come see the show. Uh, we are selling tickets in the lobby pretty much every Tuesday and Thursday evening from 6.30 to 8. Uh, come and buy a ticket or you can get one at the door, but uh, your support of the show is, is huge. It's very important to us. The Music Man hits the stage on Friday, March 20th and Saturday the 21st at 7.30 p.m. with a special matinee on Sunday the 22nd at 3 p.m. The show wraps up the following weekend, Friday, March 27th and Saturday the 28th at 7.30 p.m. You won't want to miss it. This is Maddie Gressman for What's Up Warriors. Back to you in the studio. This year's lacrosse team is extremely excited for their new season. With last year's record of 7-7, seven and seven, they are ready to start a new and successful year. For more on PT Lacrosse, here's Michael Malloy. This year's lacrosse team is really excited for the new season. With last year's record of 7-7, seven and seven, they are ready to start a new fresh year and hopefully get to the playoffs. I would say our team is, is fairly young. I think we have a lot of sophomores and juniors. We don't have too many seniors, and I don't think we have that many freshmen. We've got a lot of sophomores who will be spending some time on varsity. Um, we have a few freshmen who are going to be starting some time on varsity. So. Uh, I'd say that our underclass is a, a lot better than other teams. We have 
some new people starting up this year. We have some more freshmen coming in, some other people who are starting up. This year, uh, I'm looking forward to playing Gateway and Norwin. Uh, Norwin's our senior night, so that'll be a fun game. Both of those teams are our rivals. Both be pretty good games. Our toughest opponents this year are going to be seeing LaSalle. Uh, Greensburg Central is going to be pretty tough. Franklin's going to be pretty tough. And uh, Indiana's going to be our hardest team. Uh, one word to describe our team would be a hungry team. This is our first year that we're eligible for playoffs. And, uh, you know, I think it's a disappointing season if we don't make it. We're definitely a team that's hungry to get some wins this year. Um, you know, we deserve to be in the playoffs. It's our first year eligible in the playoffs. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a failure if we don't make the playoffs. Thanks, guys. Back to you in the studio. Thanks for watching What's Up, Warriors. Be sure to tune in next week for a new episode of the Friday Show. I'm Cam. I'm Maddie. Have a great weekend. And Friday the 13th, good luck out there.